Okay, testing. Can you say? Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, yeah. I was just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just making sure. All right, uh, we can go ahead. So uh, the question, uh, first question, and uh, I know a lot of your fans uh, have been wondering the same thing: is what have you been up to in recent years? Well, nothing. I've been <laughs> retired for twenty years, so I've been up to little or nothing. I, uh, uh, I have been living life and loving it, and uh, that's about it. So, uh, no, no games, no in that sense. Uh, uh, I, I do do quite a bit of speaking nowadays. Mm. Uh, a lot of people, for some reason, I don't know why, interested in uh, the old days at Sierra and how we used to make games back uh, when you had to use stone tablets and bear skins. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, so I've been traveling. Uh, my wife and I have traveled the world uh, uh, talking with gamers and stuff. So, and if any of your uh, uh, viewers uh, run a video game conference or something and are looking for a speaker, I've got a, a hot hour presentation at them. Okay, good. In- interesting. Yeah. Um, now, recently, hadn't you uh, done some work on, like, a kind of a reboot of Leisure Suit Larry? No, that was about six years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we, uh, we did work for a year on a... Uh, we did a Kickstarter for... And um, uh, raised six hundred fifty thousand dollars, I think, or seven fifty, something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, enough to produce a good. Uh, we put the game out, and about the time we put it out, the company fell apart. Oh no! Uh, and uh, uh, <laughs> well, some people got paid. Some of us did. Oh, okay. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and, and it was a. Uh, it was just pretty ugly. And besides that, the game didn't sell very well. It sold well at first. It sold well to all the Kickstarters backers, obviously. Mm-hmm. But to the general gaming public, they looked at it. And um, uh, while it was in the top ten uh, for the first couple of weeks, it sold well. But as soon as it fell on page, uh, the sales plummeted. And uh, yeah, and so we, we didn't make enough money to jump. A, you know, all the hard work that went into it, and so we didn't oh. make another one. Oh man, that's yeah, that's got to be kind of hard, you know, when you put so much work into something like that, and then you know it, you know, I I understand, you know, that's that's got to kind of be rough and probably a little disheartening. So, well, the, you know, the work we had a great time doing it. I, we had a great team of people, and and uh, had lots of laughs doing it. And fortunately, I didn't need the money. Uh, but there were several other people who worked on it who did, and, oh. uh, and uh, it didn't work very well for them. So that's that was it was. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So anyway, I guess the answer to the question is <laughs> um, I haven't seen any video game uh, projects that uh, that I think would work for me uh, lately. So okay. So how did you first get into programming? Oh, I was a, uh, a jazz musician and a uh, high school music teacher mm-hmm. and uh, had uh, uh, 15 experience. Uh, 30 years past my master's degree in music. And what the hell else are you going to do besides <laughs> write games? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else to do <laughs> with a background like that. Um, I... I story is I was always a, a geek um, in, in uh, uh, grade school. I was the kid who jumped up and fixed the, you know, in high school, I was the kid who uh, set up the PA system mm-hmm. and figured out why there was feedback or why they weren't getting sound or whatever. Um, and uh, I, I played in band, from, I played professionally from the time I was 13 mm. uh, uh, and put my way through college. So, so uh, I was always involved with wiring, uh, amplifiers, and, and uh, microphone cables and stuff. So, so you know, I, I, I was geeky before computers. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was a different field. But, but the um, uh, computer 
Avengers came out, I just saw it, and I wasn't sure what I would do with it, but I just felt like I had to have one. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't sure why, uh, but I told my wife, let us spend, if you let me spend uh, over a month of our combined salaries uh, on this silly little box, I'll figure out myself. And, uh, yeah, eventually I did. Huh. Okay. Um... What were some of the earliest games you were involved in? Well, my first was the cult classic, bop a bit hmm. <laughs> uh, The um, uh, long story is my uh, uh, son was a preschooler at that time, um, and I, he and I like, uh, liked to play games on the computer. So uh, when I thought of writing a game, I thought, well, I should write something that I'd play. Um, we had played a lot of adventure games at that time, um, and I, so I thought, well, I could make an adventure game, but he can't type. Mm -hmm. uh, what could a game easier? So I made an adventure game that had, uh, because the Apple had four lines of text of 40 characters each, um, I made it had one line of description. Uh, and then three choices. Mm -hmm. So it would, you could say uh, just one was this, and two was that, and three was you know go go north. Right. Um, and uh, you, I made the controls so that you could use the space bar to move the cursor and uh, the enter key to choose. Um, and it was so it was playable literally with two fingers, one on the space bar and one on the enter key. Huh. Uh, played an adventure game. Um, and moved around like that, and so that was that was the gist of it. I mean, I wrote uh, while I was working full time. I wrote both of those games, uh, uh, Baba Ben and Dragon's Keep, uh, in my spare time within three months, and hmm. then quickly started another game done in a couple months. Um, uh, sh we took those games to uh, various shows around California, um, and by the way, they were in '82. There were there weren't a lot of computer shows, mm -hmm. uh, but we took it to the show and people raved about them and said uh, they looked very professional. And we started selling them for forty dollars in a Ziploc baggie, yeah. uh, and we sold a bunch uh, enough that we uh, said, "Well, we should try to go to Apple." It's the big deal then. So we bought a we bought a ten by ten foot booth at Apple Fest, which cost us a lot of money, <laughs> um, and. Um, that we would be able to make back enough money to pay our expenses and, you know, get our name out there. But what we did was we ran to every publisher in the business. Uh, everybody was a publisher then was at Apple Fest that year. And they uh, uh, came by and said, looked at their stuff and said they would love to publish it. Why don't we let them publish it? So we kind of we went about it backwards. We started, instead of saying, uh, go to a job uh let me write a game for you uh, we wrote a game and produced it ourselves, and it was kind of an audition piece we to show everybody that we were competent and capable and, and uh, had the skills set to to create games uh and then the publishers were over us uh, to uh, uh, publish more games and that's how that's how i got started well, okay so um how about how did you get to get into Sierra? Ken Williams and Roberta came walking down the aisle at that show. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget. Uh, Ken walked in front of Roberta because she would study things more closely, and he would get bored and he'd move on quickly. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, Ken walked up to our games and he yelled back at Roberta, "Hey, Berta, these games look just like your games," <laughs> which to me was the hot because hers were the games I was buying and paying for oh, yeah. and, uh, uh, and loved to play. And so when he said that, I was... Um, they also offered us the best deal of all those publishers who were interested in us. They not only offered us the best deal, they were the one with the largest uh, uh, advertising budget, and they were the closest to us. So mm -hmm. it just kind of worked out perfectly for us. We were... I, minutes away from their headquarters uh, up in the mountains there um, so it it, uh, uh, it worked out to everyone's advantage okay 
Now, I know sometimes you don't really talk much about the uh, some of the, the those uh, Disney games that you were involved in. What was it like working on those projects? You know, Donald Duck's Playground and um, you know Black Cauldron. What was it like working on those projects? Well, it was a thrill. Uh, they Disney. Somebody at Disney thought this computers home computer thing might be something. Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe this is going to catch on. Maybe somebody should do something. Who can do something? Mm-hmm. Well, they had some women who were former elementary school teachers, and they had they were in charge of film strips and uh, oh, educational workbooks, Blige just you know move, oh, little home move, little school movies and mm-hmm. stuff like that and so they said well that kind of falls in their department so uh, we'll put them in charge of our software mm-hmm. our games um, well they had no idea what to do we knew far more about not only gaming but the whole, the whole business that they did mm-hmm. um, so they were our contact with Disney but they didn't really um, offer valuable suggestions or insights or anything um uh so what they uh, they said well what do you want to do and i knew he had the winnie the pooh properties which was always a favorite of mine because i remember i had two kids that, right at that right age so they uh, i said well pooh came so uh they said okay that was about the total pitch we had hmm. um and i went home uh, because I wasn't working for Sierra, I was an outside contractor. Mm-hmm. I lived at, I lived and worked at home, and periodically I would go up Sierra's offices and, and uh, I don't know, get a floppy disk full of graphics or, or uh, you know, talk to somebody about pizza um, or something. But but basically, I was an outsider, um, and so I just went home and, and uh, created a game that I thought was. A um, and uh, didn't show it to him for forever. I mean, it, it, like the game was almost finished, hmm. and uh, uh, before they finally saw it, and finally one of them said, "Hey, you know, oh, maybe we should look at that game that we, <laughs> this guy's doing." Um, and so when we did, I, 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 it was almost done, and they had they had many suggestions for changes, but they had no suggestions for improvements, hmm. and so. Uh, and I said, do you want me to waste uh, weeks of time or do you want to just sell this and get on to the next game? Well, mm-hmm. I knew his answer was always, get it, ship it, get it out of here, yep. get on to the next one. Um, and so pretty much that's what we did. So they had almost no input on that one. Or Donald. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they, they got somehow the guy who was doing Mickey Space Adventure with Roberta uh, got into a where they would make suggestions and you know oh this color you you should make that color a slightly darker brown <laughs> and it's like well, well that's a that's two hours of work oh, nobody's gonna care if that's different yes but that's what we want oh. it's well, it's just like uh, 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 anyway he ended up spending weeks uh to finish his game and um, you know and I just kind of ignored him and went ahead and finished, got it done, and went on to the next project. But, mm-hmm. um, but it was fun. It was a uh, it was fun to do. The I called her especially was a thrill for me because um, Disney flew me down to Burbank and uh, picked me up in a limo at the airport, uh, hauled me over to the studios and, and gave me a a uh, I don't know like a, a a mouseketeer or something some sort. Mm-hmm. First, a young person to show me around and take me places and uh, gave me the whole tour and then ended up uh, uh, giving me a private screening of the film mm-hmm. uh, months, months before it came out. Oh, a year, more than a year oh, before wow. it came out. So uh, I got to see the uh, works in progress and it was really fat and, and uh, a thrill because parts of the film were um, in color and finished complete and other parts there would just be uh, like a still drawing that kind of moved around on the screen so huh. you could get the idea, oh, he walks from here to there, but there's no walking animation. It was just like a, a 
a still picture moving around. And another one of the backgrounds were uh, completely in and done. And then the next scene, there would be a uh, drawing of a pipe in a basement. And um, that would be the background scene <laughs> for this next. So it was really uh, a work in and that was fascinating. Uh, my only regret was I didn't take a big cigar along because <laughs> they put me in a theater uh, on the Disney campus and they had a, um, uh, a projector operator and a sound operator and a house man and three guys working in this theater for me. And when I got there, they said, all right, we'll sit anywhere you want. And let us know when you're ready, and we'll start. And I was like, wait, I'm the only one? And <laughs> so I, I had this theater all to myself, and I kept thinking, man, fat stogie. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, no, so that was really fun to, to do mm-hmm. that game. We got, you know, uh, <laughs> I, have a, I have a good story about the um, uh, archives at Disney. Okay. They said, we'll let you go in the and see the uh, you know the, the original works artworks from the movie mm-hmm. and I said oh great and I'm thinking you know like um, archive I had been into was the National Archives in Washington D.C. which is you know near the mall there and a and, uh, big stone building with giant columns and you know uh, <laughs> very fancy and everything and so when they took me over to the archives we went to a building and then went down and ex- well um, into a basement and knocked on this door and the woman came to the door and uh, opened they introduced me and stuff and let me inside and just then the phone rang and so my my keeper my handler left she had other things to do uh, so the the lady who was in charge of the archives said uh, oh the phone's ringing let me get the phone uh, you wait right here okay so I'm standing just inside the door in a basement underneath sewer pipes and water pipes and fire sprinklers um, and, uh, you know, just ugly concrete walls and stuff. And there are these metal racks like you would buy at Costco or something, you know, like a dump shelving. So I kind of, you know, lean over and put my hand on one of these racks and I realize I have my hand on the... uh, drawings for Snow White. Oh. <laughs> oh my god. Was like, oh. <laughs> what? And every, this whole room just actually wasn't a room, it was a hallway. This entire hallway in this basement corridor was filled with metal racks full of paper, just wrapped um, uh, it was like a file folder in paper, you know, that they kind of Hard stock, but it was just large pieces of it, and they would be wrapped around, oh, two inches or three or four or five inches thick of hand drawn pencil drawings, animation drawings wow. for all every movie that Disney had ever made. Wow. They, shh, I said, I work on the uh, music for the game, uh, and she said, oh, all our music's over here, and she took me to one sh- one rack that had with uh, Steamboat Willie in the upper left corner and it went down to number 25 which was the Black Cauldron Hmm. Uh, and they had every school and set of parts to every film they had ever done on that one shelf and I kept thinking what if this what if these pipes leak (laughs) (laughs) so um, uh, I said well how about the background art she said oh yeah we've got all the backgrounds here so the back game for that movie was all uh, original watercolors mm-hmm. uh, and acrylic drawings and so the uh, uh, she took me into this room and so picture a table that's 8 feet by 8 feet okay so two sheets of plywood right this uh, a giant big table and it was mounded up with artboards and all the original artwork for that movie wow and, and she Next week, I have to go through and throw all this stuff away. <laughs> <laughs> Honest to God, it was like, uh, what? 
I gotta get this out of here because next week I get all the cells in from the movie, and you know, there's I forget how many thousand, hundred thousand cells they had, and she said we only keep one percent. You know, ninety nine percent we throw in the dumpster. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Eisner, Michael Eisner, put a stop to that. Yeah. <laughs> <And> he realized. <laughs> He realized I could sell those for thirty-five or forty dollars a piece. Right. But God, that was the what she said. She said, "Yep, I'm really dreading next week. I got to go through and throw away ninety-nine percent of these cells." Oh, jeez. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, ori- a lot of the original animation drawings, the hand-drawn pencil drawings, um, they kept those uh, because other artists could study them mm-hmm. and see how somebody did a certain effect and so her job was to figure out what would be valuable in the future to future animators huh. it was interesting <laughs> yeah I really enjoyed that film um, and the game of course I, I love the Black Cauldron game It was I had a lot of fun playing it I liked the whole concept of the you know the do button and uh, I just really feel kind of bad in a way I thought that was a great film and I really feel bad that it kind of bombed because I think it just didn't get its fair shake because it didn't have the cutesy characters and songs that other Disney films had. But, you know, that's just me. 